Stairway to nowhere. Okay, so now we have just entered to the studio two great Irish animators that uh, have been in the open workshop. It's Jack and Connor from Ireland. Give it up. Ooh. Woohoo. Ooh, that's our audience. 30 people in the crowd. Thank you. Thank you. It's strange being interviewed in front of such a large audience. <laughs> um, Jack, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? And Connor, you also introduce yourself. Okay. I'm Jack McHugh, 26 years old, from Kilkenny in Ireland. I have one sister. My dog was recently put down, so I have no pets. And I'm a 2D animator. Uh, I'm Connor. I'm 25. I'm from Offaly. Uh, I have two brothers and one dog who is on his way out. I hear. <laughs> He's on the way out. He's struggling. Yeah. <coughs> oh, and I'm a background artist for animation. But who did the character designs in the? I did actually. Did that too. Character oh. designer. Character designers for. Yes. Let's let's get into that. <laughs> you guys, you guys have been in the open workshop working on a project after having like a long history of animation in the industry um, and now you want to do your own projects can you t talk a bit about your project but one thing first you say open workshop what is that what is that first? Oh, um, the open workshop is an artist's residency here in the same building as the animation workshop in Viborg and we heard about this because uh, we actually did a different residency in Ireland when we graduated from college in Dunleary in Dublin. And uh, a friend of mine and my former director, Cora McKenna, who studied in the animation workshop, said, oh, you like residencies? You like living for free? There's one in Viborg. And we applied, and we're here. So they just give us... Six months is the maximum sentence, unless you reapply. So you get six months of free accommodation and a workspace and as much feedback as you want. Actually, I think only one feedback session <laughs> per month, <laughs> per month. Uh, but that's plenty. And so you have spent the last six months here um, working on a film together. Uh, well, we applied with... The idea, a short film, 2D animated, about a little boy selling strawberries on the side of a road in Ireland. Because this is like, this is a thing in Ireland where young lads kind of, it's their summer job. They just <laughs> spend the whole summer out there selling strawberries. But this, this story is different, okay? <laughs> he, he's forced to stay out overnight selling strawberries because he's such a bad salesman. Spooky. Wow. Spooky. Because the strawberries come to life. Don't say anymore. Don't That's say enough. anymore. It's very mysterious. But um, we came up with this idea because we've made some films together. We made a first made like a third year. Our our college was four years, so we made a project together in third year because we were good friends. And we wanted to see could we work together well, and that went okay. We, ent we, enter <laughs> we entered it into one festival and it won the award for best animation at that festival. So we said, oh, this is, this is so easy. This is brilliant. You just enter into festivals and you get trophies. And so then we were like, okay, we'll make our graduation film together. And then after college, we did the residency. Then we worked in the industry for a while. Me as an animator, Connor as a layout, mm -hmm. layout artist. And then we got sick of that, and we wanted to work on our own stuff again. How do you two know each other? Um, well, we met in college first year, and I think, I don't know why we ended up just sitting beside each other. don't know what. I know. He knows. 
I know it was because um, in uh, our college there was a lot of strange people who frightened me <laughs> and we were told to choose our desk wisely and we were just led into this studio and because you're going to be there for the full year so I looked around and I saw strange frightening people everywhere but there was one person who was wearing a Gaelic football jersey and Gaelic football is one of Ireland's national sports and I, I play it a bit so I said oh well if he's wearing a Gaelic football jersey he must be kind of up my alley so that's why I sat beside Connor. Connor, do you have something to add? The rest is history. <laughs> But um, what does the future hold? I've heard rumors singing, birds singing from Iceland, <laughs> that something will happen. Chip, 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 chip. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the bird from Iceland. It's here. Uh, the rumors are true. Everything you've heard is true. <laughs> we'll be working. <laughs> We've accepted jobs. <laughs> For a studio in Iceland, so I'll be working from home. Now, when when we go home, <laughs> we'll be working from home uh, for about three months, I think, and then possibly moving. We'll see. We'll update you. Will you be working from home, or is there some way in, in uh, Ireland where you can still have your seats up against each other? Sweat um, against sweat. <coughs> I'd say we'll be working from home just to uh, try and financially recover from the six months of uh, no income except for singing on the Viborg streets. Yes. Yeah, so I'd say we'll work from home to build back up the funds before we move anywhere else. Okay. Is there, is there any other residencies on the map that has caught your attention? Yeah, well, coming here, it seems like, you know, resident people who do residencies like residencies so everyone or most people have been to some other residency before or are going to one after so we'll just keep in touch with other open workshop people and we might end up like them eternal bums stairway to nowhere um but you just briefly mentioned the The singing in the streets. I open my window and I hear oh. your beautiful uh, voice come in. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah, well, I remember uh, the first time. It's uh, it's funny that we should talk about this now because the first time I went busking, Niels, you came out from your apartment and you gave me a button <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. instead of a coin. And just yesterday, just yesterday, I put that button in the bin. No. <laughs> so it's funny that you should mention it now. But um, you didn't have to tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> just for I think it's just radio gold. Mm. But uh, no, the buskin was good fun. I wasn't sure how the Danish people would react because I haven't seen up until I played on the street. I didn't see anyone else play, so I wasn't sure was it illegal or mm. or what. But and then I wasn't sure as well because there's not much people don't have much cash. Also, like the kroner is not worth that much, like little five kroner pieces or whatever. So, but anyway. Mm. Danish people know they do have cash and they're very generous and they love Irish music. That's great. Yeah, they also like folk music a lot, right? Yep. yep. Stuff. And people were, requ were requesting Irish songs as well. Like they knew Irish songs, which was nice. So then what's what's your impression of living in Viborg after uh, your time in Ar living in Ireland all your life, I assume? Don't let me assume, you can correct me. Um, yes, you're correct. We have been living <laughs> there for our entire life. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's been nice, yeah. It's been really, it's almost too nice. Hmm. Almost too nice. Maybe, <laughs> maybe yeah. that's more elaborate. the end. Yeah, please elaborate on that. Yeah. Uh, we just, maybe, maybe it's just this school, there's too many... There's so many events going on. I just mean for work, like it's distracting. Or w I, we were very open to being distracted. I feel. Um, so maybe if it was somewhere more, with like less things going on, we would have gotten more work done. That kind of a way. 
What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The first residency we did, we made a six-minute film in six months uh, because there was no pubs open, no shops. It was all COVID. It was just us and this other girl, Kleena Noonan, who was making her film at the same time. And she was very a very diligent worker who really uh, was a good influence on us. But then we came to the open workshop and the likes of Julie and Miha and Mark and Jacob <laughs> and Linnea, these people were very bad influences. They wanted to have too much fun and we gave in <laughs> willingly. Yes, I would, I would want to say willingly because mm-hmm. I think I've never seen anybody uh, like you guys being so open to, to new things and it was, uh, it was quite interesting how fast you integrated into uh, Vibo. I know. Makes it harder to leave. Is it sad to leave Vibo? Yes. It's sad to leave the people we've met here behind. Yeah, s- definitely. We've met many great people here, so it'll be sad to say goodbye. Who knows when we'll be back here, you know? <laughs> Who knows when? If ever. Yeah. But the animation world is so small. The first day that I arrived here, we were getting a tour of the open workshop and we were shown where the script writing people from the open workshop were working away. And then uh, this smiley Italian man, when we were introduced, he was like, oh, you are Jack McHugh? You work for Studio Mala? <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah, who are you? And it turns out that was Lamberto. And I, I had worked on the same project as Lamberto, but I'd never met him before oh. until I came here. Oh. So I'm sure... We'll we'll see almost everyone again. Yeah, yeah. And you you told me you were even gonna meet with a, a like Julie in Kilkenny. Yeah, when I come, I'm going home now, and Julie is gonna be visiting some other friend of hers in Kilkenny, my hometown, uh, at the end of November. And, and Julie, Julie was a former resident, so that's an unplanned meeting. I don't want to meet her. But she's coming to Kilkenny, I have to. (laughs) What's the best adventure you guys had here in Viborg? I think a great one that comes to mind immediately was the intro trip when we got invited along to that. That was a lovely, it almost feels like it didn't happen. Yeah. Niels, explain what that is. (laughs) (laughs) The tables have turned. No, that's that's a little little student trip we we tried to do for the first years, and then we were we needed some people to do the oh, 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 oh yeah. um to do uh, like some um, team building exercises mm-hmm. and we we were um, lacking some people and we thought who can we invite that are very kind mm. Irish people come to mind. But also, who can we invite where we don't have to invite a whole other year? Uh, so Open Workshop was perfect because there was a little amount of people there that we could grab and uh, put on the on the trip. And it was very nice that you joined. Yeah. And we even slept in the same um, chamber at night. And I feel like we have been first years together almost. Yeah, yeah it was a real bonding experience, a very, very special weekend. Mm. Our first time to see the Danish countryside, too, mm-hmm. on that trip. And uh, we came across, remember, the hill, which was a oh, yes. special place where some people learned how to uh, make the noise with grass, the squeaking noise. And we spent hours making that noise. It was lovely. And it kept being funny. Yeah. For some reason. Yeah. The magic of the trip. For me as well, a highlight was uh, weaseling my way into the band that played at the VAF party. Mm-hmm. That was a major highlight for me. Loved it. And Niels was part of the band as well. <laughs> so Niels is part of both of our special moments. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. That's just special. realized. Coincidentally. Uh, just another great memory, I suppose. That's after coming to my mind is we cycled, I don't know, like an hour north of Viborg because um, we heard that there were these half Irish, half Danish musicians like folk musicians playing a little free gig i forget what festival was going on at the time it was the uh, snap sting festival it was the snap sting festival and <laughs> we cycled up to these boys for a free gig also feels surreal because it was like 
in this place, this little lakeside village. I think it's called Hjar- Hjarbeck or something. Like Hjarbeck. A fjord. Yeah. A fjord. Yeah, big fjord, something. Mm-hmm. And we got to talk to these lads after, and it's just very, very strange that they were there while we were here. They were uh, Danish guys, but their dad was Irish, so they would only sing Irish songs for all these Danish people. And we were the only fully Irish people there uh, among all these old Danish people. And we drank wine and ate crisps, and it was lovely. You've had a lot of fun, definitely. I feel like... yeah, um, but And and you were kind of saying, oh, we, we didn't get a lot of work done. We weren't very productive because we were distracted all the time. But uh, but you did also do something, right? Yes. You have a finished animatic and almost a finished film. Oh, yeah. So we basically uh, have a finished animatic, yeah, for sure. But we I like there's a section of the film that's like the most interesting part. I can't talk too much about it, you know. But the, this section has a song and that whole part is fully animated and cleaned up and colored. So it's like a little mini music video. But something I've learned here in Viborg, well, I knew this already, but just uh, from an industry point of view is really like it doesn't matter what you know or what you can do. It's all about who you know and who you can do. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, it's just who you know, who you know. Basically, uh, what I mean is when it comes to jobs and opportunities and you'll only hear about things that are available and up for grabs through, it's not through LinkedIn and things like this. It's through talking to people Uh, and whether you like it or not, you don't have to try hard, but inevitably by chatting to people, you'll hear someone's working at a studio. Oh, they need jobs. Oh, they'll get the two Irish lads over to Iceland. Yeah, yeah, you know. (laughs) These things, or that's how you'll hear about residencies. It's very hard to, like, Google animation residency Europe. But you'll hear about lots of them through meeting people who have done them. Um, What do you want to say with your film that you've been working on? Um, We don't like to say anything. We just want to make the people happy. I feel that's usually how we work. We don't have any deep message for the for anyone we just hope that people enjoy it while they're watching it yeah and uh, i think what part of why uh, me and connor started making films together as well was in college we went to a lot of screenings and a lot of festivals and like in animation festivals there's a lot of like very long very serious films with very heavy topics and emotional montages of people in pain and anguish dealing with personal issues and all this. And they're very nice and they win uh, win the awards and they make you cry and everything. But the films that stand out to me and stood out to Connor as well back then were always the little stupid, silly films in between. And they're like uh, palate cleansers, you know. So that's what that's kind of like what we've been aspiring to make is uh, little palate cleansers that are silly and stupid and kind of funny, but not in a not in a gag way, funny in a strange way. Mm-hmm. And a big thing then as well is uh, having a song in the in the film, really a song that will get stuck in people's heads and uh, afterwards they'll remember the song. They might not remember the story. It's like uh, it's like the way years ago when you'd go to the cinema and you'd go all day long and there'd be like cartoons before the feature film and then there'd be like a B film and then a feature film after. Uh, I like to try and make like a sh- like short films that would be on before a feature film or in between two feature films or something. Little that's what I mean by a little palate cleanser, mm-hmm. just something silly. Um, the exact same just hoping to make something short and sweet and actually enjoy making it we don't want it to be like too big of a chore I feel yeah, which is yeah we don't want to sh- stress too much about it that's kind of what we did for our grad film though we uh, we felt like there are little plot holes in it that needed to be explained but people 
don't really care at the end of the day, I feel. Mm. So, yeah, we just want to enjoy making it, I feel. What is your, uh, your like, um, like work uh, ethic or how, uh, when do you show up to work? What do you do? Or did you set expectations between each other? What can you expect from each other when you work in the residency? Well, I I just try and work like uh, nine to five, like it's a normal job. Try and get up and just treat it like a regular job. But um, like it's easier as well if like when we're doing when I'm when we're working on like storyboards, I try and only have shots that I would be interested in animating. So like not too many just boring little close-ups with hardly any movement or whatever. And this means that uh, every day I knew when I was animating, even if this film doesn't get done, the shots I was doing, would they could be like portfolio pieces because they were kind of interesting. Um, but no, I was. we were just talking there about how usually when we're working on a short film, I, you kind of enter a pump mode where... I'd be like blasting through a lot of shots and every day I'd be coming away from the computer boggly eyed and uh, that didn't happen here because <laughs> we were just, you know, playing basketball, football, tennis, what have you. I suppose it's more healthy um, breaks I was taking. So it's kind of like you're looking for a way to enjoy the whole process and then through the environment here forcing you to take breaks. Um, you didn't do as much as maybe you hoped, but you did ha- You did achieve the having fun while making it, no? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, had a lot of fun. And yeah, but it was hard, I suppose, it's hard to motivate yourself in an environment like this because there's no one uh, like checking up on you to see, you know, are you doing the work or whatever. So I felt... I just kept, uh, yeah, kept like just in trying to enjoy myself, animating every shot, and then that's what would get me up out of bed in the morning. Was looking forward to, oh, today I have to do a shot where the strawberry tries to bite the child's leg or something, you know, and just get excited about that. Don't spoil, <laughs> don't spoil too much, <laughs> But uh, are you like hard on each other's, or uh, are you like keeping each other's? Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm soft on Connor. He's probably too soft on me, if anything. He's let me get away with too much. Um, but no, I think, yeah, I feel like we worked well together because we're not, we're not too hard on each other. Yeah, don't know how to explain that any further. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. You still have, but you still have your own like inside principles and how to work so you don't need to oh, yeah. be very hard on each other because you take responsibility for your own work yeah because he's kind of a soft touch I'd feel guilty if I did absolutely ah. nothing you know so I don't want to like I want to keep giving him background so he can animate over them you know I don't want him to be idle mm. you know yeah. or waiting for me to finish something Mm-mm-mm. soft guilt um I think it's very cool how you, you, you want to make something and you want to f- make it feel fresh, it seems. Or what, what would you say to somebody that wants to make something? Uh, I want to make a, a film, a little film, not too ambitious, but I w- just want to try these techniques or do something that's fun. How do you approach that without getting bored? Um, I think you have to just decide like what's the most important part of whatever it is you're doing. Like, is it the dialogue? Is that what's funny or emotive? Or is it the the look of just the backgrounds and the animation doesn't really matter? Or is it that there's no background and it's all about the animation? Just, I don't know, just usually if for something really short, there's like one, you can't have everything good, especially if you're making it on your own. So just figure out what is the good thing and then just emphasize that. And then don't be precious about the other stuff. So if, like, for example, if I was making something on my own, it would be, like, the animation that I'd want to be, like, clear and nice. And then I would do the background in a second on a napkin <laughs> and just with a few lines I wouldn't care about it because I'd say, well, this short is not about the backgrounds. Mm. It's about the movements. Mm. 
And likewise, if there's like a little song in it or a dialogue, then it's just about the like acting and the lip sync. Yeah. And the animation and the backgrounds don't really matter at all. So I'd say just focus on whatever is whatever is needed for the piece to be funny or sad or whatever. Yeah. But it, it seemed that you, you did scope quite well, like looking from the outside, it seems like a nice little project. But um is there something you regret about this this like project? Would you what would you Would you have done something differently? Uh, I suppose uh, I'll let Connor answer as well because he probably has a different regret. But my regret is um, like just not starting the animation sooner. Like I feel like when we came here, everyone in the open workshop was kind of working on their scripts and rewriting scripts and doing animatics. And I'm not sure about the timing of the pacing and all this. But like for our project... <laughs> It should have just. I should have just started a- as soon as there was like a shot I liked. I should have just started animating it straight away, and then worried about the story after, just to just to get the ball rolling. Because I feel like maybe in the first month, we just spent we spent a long time on the script and the story for a film that like I've just told you to that like it's just a palate cleanser. Yeah, that's what I wanted it to be. The script and the story actually shouldn't have mattered. Mm. that much and it took a while for that to uh to sink in but yeah. we were getting some feedback as well you know help with the script and the story and so, like from a supervisor and then so this you know we kind of wanted to please him as well and we should have just focused on pleasing ourselves yeah i think we got bogged down a bit too much with like plot and what does this symbolize what does this represent and like making it like a neat little story um but i don't think we really wanted to tell much of a story now uh looking back in hindsight and um, we just wanted like a palette cleanser a nice little show piece that we would be satisfied with so yeah we probably wasted too much time like thinking about the plot and all this yeah but but with all this what what was your um biggest uh, learning with a project like this you, you take from it i suppose just get it done get it done. i've always i was al- i was always proud of myself in college and after college of just getting things done even if they're not perfect it's better to have something finished that's not good <laughs> rather than something that's yeah. absolutely an oscar winner but it's not finished so who cares mm-hmm. um So I just reminded myself of that, and that's when I started animating. I was like, yeah, let's try and get something done. But a lot of people in the open workshop, we didn't really know this, but like a lot of people who come here are here to like develop one part of their film. So they'll spend like three months or four months just on the script or just on the animatic or whatever. So I suppose we arrived thinking we could get everything done, and uh, no one else was doing that. So that's why everyone was more... Uh, fun more up for doing things because you can't just sit at a computer all day doing script you know you need to be fresh be fresh but that's like something else some people have producers and all like and we didn't even know you could get a producer and get funding from different places because in Ireland there's like one short film fund and that's it and you and if you get that fund you can't get money from anywhere else Oh. So it's like a different kind of system, whereas here it seems that people get a producer and they get like try and get a little bit of money from here, a little bit of money from there, and they make the film that way. So that's another thing I learned is that if I was going to make something in the future, I probably wouldn't start or I wouldn't do much without a producer. Hmm. So how do you get a producer? <laughs> that's what we're trying to find out. But I think you just, uh, like what I was saying earlier on, it's the same way you get a job in Iceland. You just talk to people. So what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can say it no, again. I can, uh, I can ask the question again um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that Amalia asked. She, she said, um, Connor, she said, <laughs> um, what was it, what did you learn from your previous experiences before coming here that made you, made you think that you could come here and actually <laughs> make a film? What, what made you 
have the confidence to come here and think you can do this thing. I still don't know why I had the audacity to think I could come here <laughs> How dare and do you? this. It's outrageous. Um, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess the main thing, I'm kind of like a parrot here echoing what he just said about actually finishing a project. Um, I suppose just the fact that we've made a few films already, we felt like we know what we're doing somewhat. We'll get another one done, might as well. And it was just going to be a new experience, like getting to move away from home was nice, especially after like w those jobs that we had in the industry, or my one anyway, was working from home. So yeah, it was nice coming here. It was a huge change of scenery that I really enjoyed. Yeah. How about you, Jack? Yeah, me too. Yeah, and it's just because we made we've made um, what is it like this is our fifth film together. Yeah. Wow, so that's a lot. We said, oh, should we finish the last ones? We'll to, we'll go again. And one of them won in a festival. Um. Yeah. They all. They all have. They all have. They all have now. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna send the audience crazy. Can you? You once told me a a nice tip. If you are, <laughs> I don't know if you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's go. Let's get into it. <laughs> it's a nice tip to to get good. <laughs> to get so you could call yourself multi award winning uh, film. <laughs> <laughs> If multiple films of yours won <coughs> festivals, just yes, yeah, they're, yeah. they're great films. But this trick, <laughs> you've got to. But it sounds like a, a true. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's a all trick. legal. It's. Yeah. Uh, it's it's all all step <laughs> step number one of becoming a multi award winning filmmaking duo is is just make really good films. You know, that's number one. It's yeah. always been the goal. And it's how do you what make? Drives the, me. How do you make? But when, best film ever. but when you've got your best, the best film ever made, as yeah. we did four, five times, um, uh, all you do is you go onto this website called Film Freeway, <laughs> and in the you, you can Film Freeway. I don't know. Niels hadn't heard about it, so I'll assume some people haven't heard about it. But you just upload uh, like the screener for your film. You upload the thumbnails, director biography, blah blah blah, all these details, and then. On there, there's lots of festivals listed, and you just set the uh, price to zero for entry, and then you set the uh, sort by <laughs> the closest deadlines first, and then you just get your mouse and you just go click, 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 really? check out. That's a good trick. <laughs> yep, and then you'll get into a, you'll get into festivals all over the place, the Middle East. Southeast Asia, <laughs> will it, will Australia, Canada, there? Russia. I want to play gonna, gonna fund your trip there as well. Well, the only the only place that actually uh, was going to fund our trip oh, yes. uh, was in some Russian festival. They were going to pay for our flights and accommodation to attend, roll out the red carpet. But this was like maybe three weeks after Russia had invaded Ukraine, uh -huh. so. The, the Irish government uh, weren't encouraging people to travel to Russia at that time, so we no. couldn't go. But no, the f the film freeway thing like is uh, <clears throat> that's what we do. But it's because we're not so precious with our film. Like me and Niels were talking about this with Merline, who's a more serious director. Yes, and sh she had a different strategy of being more uh, calculated. Mm. But I think for our films, we've always had a few festivals in mind that we like and that we want to get into. So we'll hold back, you know, because some festivals, it needs to be like a world premiere or an Irish premiere or whatever for the film to get in. So we'll always, we'll hold back and make sure we get into the ones we like. And the, But then after that, when it's coming towards the end of your film's life in the festivals, then you can start clicking, mm. pick up a few sympathy awards. Yes, but it but it's actually good because I was thinking... Well, I might just straight away go into Film Freeway and uh, submit everything, but there were so many complicated laws and stuff on top of each other. You might say yes to stuff yeah. you don't want to say yes to. But if the if it's a palate cleanser, 
you know. <laughs> yeah. And and if it's at the end of the festival run, then you might as well. No, there's a film that we are la- the f- we finished a film there last October and it's still not released and hasn't been entered into any festivals because I've entered it into one festival that we really wanted to get into. Um and it's that festival is not until July and it has to be a world premiere mm. or an Irish premiere for it to get into that festival. So we're just sitting on this film and we can't put it anywhere, you know, and it's hard to do that if you're waiting for one festival. What festival? What festival is it? It's uh, the Galway Film Fla in Ireland. It's because this festival need it needs it has to be an Irish premiere, but every other film that we've had, we just didn't wait for it. We just we put them into other Irish festivals. Mm. Um, but we just think this one, let's just aim for that. I might want to change subject a little bit and go a little bit back to Vibor because I think you two and especially Connor, you must be experts at this point at seeing what is Vibo about and how do you integrate. And you know, maybe people listening to this podcast will go into the open workshop in the future or want to become a part of Vibo. So what is the best way to to like think about Vibo and how do you do you start here? Because for many people, it can feel like a little place or like a little town and a little claustrophobic at times. Uh, we've been here almost six months and we still, I, I personally don't know how you go about it. We were kind of led astray by the population. We thought it was going to be a bustling city, a hub, a real town of industry and activity but it's a little bit of a ghost town at times, so I feel like it's just like the animation industry. You have to get to know the right people. And for us, Viborg is the animation workshop. That's the... the We could be anywhere else otherwise, you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think just lean in. That's why uh, we... That's why we uh, made friends with all, like, all the Open Workshop people and the students because the animation community is really fun and there's lots of... Uh, I was very impressed with all the different events that are organised by students, for students, and like the radio, the radio being one, yeah? And like all these cosy movie nights and parties and things, like it's really good. So And also... Um, a big plug I'll give as well as the volleyball. I love playing volleyball with the Tau volleyball gang. Yes. Football tennis, is that a good way? Uh, that's a good way to get enemies, I feel like. Football tennis is a great way yeah, to get to know. Like, There's people that I, that play football tennis. I don't know what they study. Um, I don't know what year they're in or where they're from, but... When we play football tennis, they're either my best friends or my worst enemies, depending <laughs> on which team they're on. Yeah. So it's a great way to make friends. So sports, sports and animation kind of go hand in hand. Because you got to get up of your chair and do this stuff and get to know the people around you. Yeah. That's, that's the more... You have to move, yeah. It, um, I see you, Jack, looking at your phone, looking at the time. Because you have a meeting at 2. We have our farewell to the open workshop meeting with Mary Louisa and Inara. Yes, and sweet. I have to uh, give them presents for their children that I won uh, on the VAF Instagram page. Last year, before I even came to Viborg, I won a gift pack because Connor McNally tagged me in a comment and then I tagged him back and I won a Smurfs goodie bag. Smurfa. Smulfa, Strumpf in French. <laughs> and one of the things that was in the pack I knew was uh, a hat, a Smurf's cap. And so I messaged them. I said, I won. That, thanks very much. And they said, yes, you have to collect your prize in Viborg. This was like last December. And I said, okay, well, I'll be there in May. Will they keep it for me? And they said they would. So I didn't pack a cap because I knew I had a Smurf's one waiting for me. Yeah, and that that was my uh, my Viborg cap, but also in the in the prize pack was like a jigsaw puzzle with like forty pieces for children, and a book in Danish, a children's book, 
and I've been trying to sell them on Facebook Marketplace for 10 kroner for the last six months and I haven't been able to sell them. So today I'm going to bestow them upon Mary Louisa and Inara, the organizers of Open Workshop, for their kids. Amazing. Uh, it's been very upsetting for me to see Jack with his strumpf hat every day because he's been cherishing it so much and I'm the reason he got it and I'm without a strumpf hat. <coughs> but, you know, congratulations all the same. Very happy for you. But I mean, and you could have played with the puzzle that was there too, but you didn't. It's too easy for us. Yeah. <laughs> How many pieces? Forty. Oh, that's not a lot. But uh, when will your film be released? Well, we have a dilemma now when we go home because, as I say, there's a musical section of the film that is finished. It's about a minute long. You'll hear the song. Uh, so... It depends how motivated we're feeling when we go home. Should we just release that and call it the film? Uh, or should we? will we be motivated to do the other boring parts of the film and put the start, the start and the end on it to make it into a longer film? I don't know. Who knows? Okay. So maybe in the new year. In the new year. And um, should we... I don't know what else. What else should we look out for? Where where can we see it? Is it on Instagram? We should follow you. What about the, uh, yeah, also the other films that you've made that have been out. Oh yeah, just look us up on uh, Instagram. Jack McHugh is my name. My Instagram name is Hugh MacJack. Flipped around. <laughs> uh, Connor McNally is my name. My Instagram is Connor McNally underscore. And there you'll find links to our other uh, other films. All award winning because of the film freeway trick. Oh. It's not. It's not a trick. And but then and uh, and you should check out also uh, Jack's uh, album that was recently released. Oh yeah, while in Viborg as well. Yeah, I released the EP of six original songs. That's More like epic. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I also I also uh, secretly animated a music video for one of the songs while I was here in the open workshop. Oh. Any last words? Um, well, thanks for having us, I think, first of all. Yeah. And lastly, thanks for having us. <laughs> I'll say a uh, Perfect. Yeah. Please, yeah. We, this is always, Viborg is always open with open arm for you guys to come back. And Ireland has open arms for everyone, especially Kilkenny. Yeah. Everyone who's listening. Yeah. One free night, bed and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I can almost hear the strawberry song pushing its way into this interview. Oh, I hear them marching. But but actually, before we put it on, the, the whole song, um, <laughs> could you break down the lyrics a bit? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Yeah, or could you, s- could you sing uh, a little bit? Part of it, and maybe Connor could also be part of that. Yeah. So the main chant is like uh, strawberry, 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 strawberry,
This has been Stairway to Nowhere Radio. <laughs> radio. <laughs> Thank radio. you. <laughs> radio. That was a very good radio. It's good, yeah. <laughs> Fresh, but you wouldn't sell us. Now we'll eat your flesh. Strawberries, 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 str